Hi, welcome to Rick's Corner. I'm experimenting today with my iPhone 5 camera to see how this broadcasts on the air from Rick's Corner, and so far I've had good luck with it. But I wanted to go back a couple of steps to the a week in the day of the life of the Golden Era, because people ask me, what did you guys do? And I've done videos on this before. Um, some are incomplete because I didn't get all the details out, but I'm going to do some, some more today. And I'll carry this through, and, and, and eventually I'll go down to the beach and take maybe Eddie Giuliani or somebody with me for a walkthrough, and we can have a discussion on it, which will be a lot of fun. But a week in that day, back in the 70s, with our training and our diet, and what we did was, was a life never to be duplicated again. In the mornings, Monday morning, for example, let's say Arnold would honk and pick me up. We'd go to Zookie's Deli and have hamburger patty and eggs before we trained. Go down to Gold's Gym, work out for an hour and a half maybe, two hours tops, no more than that. Chest and back, uh, abs. Um, there was no cardio, like I said. We didn't have life cycles or we didn't have treadmills and we didn't have Stairmasters. We just worked out hard. And that basically was the whole thing. So we'd work out. You know, a lot of you guys comment, gee, you guys wore shorts and you wore barefoot. Yeah, we lived at the beach. That was the style back then. Guys would sit, lay on the beach, come in barefoot, do calves, go back down, take a swim in the ocean. It was only across the street, so it was easy. But this is how we functioned. And uh, today, you know, there's rules in the gym. You have to have shoes. You have to have all these different things. But back then, there were no rules. Joe owned the gym, Joe Gold. He built it for us and the guys before us to come in out, out of the rain, out of the bad weather, and work out. In a cinder block building, no frills, no thrills, just good weights that he built himself, good machines, and that's what we used. It was hardcore. There was no saunas or jacuzzis, and, and there was no pools, no spas. It had one bathroom shared by men and women. We only had two women in the whole gym. So it was basically us guys training. So after our workout, we would probably head over to maybe the marina, which is a mile down the road, where all the boats and the harbors are, and they had a place called uh, Jamaica Bay Inn. And they knew us over there, so we'd go over, we'd have maybe a half a chicken and eggs and cottage cheese, and whatever we ate for lunch, basically that high-protein diet. Maybe go out, lay by the pool for an hour, take a swim, come back later in the day and do calves and abs. Now, that wasn't every day. It was just once in a while if we had time in the afternoon. I had commercial auditions, as did some other guys, so I'd drive into Hollywood and do my commercial auditions and come back, and I was pretty much done for the day. You know, eat dinner, maybe barbecue a couple of steaks or burger patties and cottage cheese, and then... 11 o'clock at night, we'd all round up sometimes and meet down at Zookie's Deli again because it's kind of a hangout. You know, as you're younger, you have places you hang where all the guys, maybe it's a pool hall, maybe it's a coffee shop, maybe it's, you know, a drive-in, whatever. But we would all hang out down there and just sit and shoot the hell and just have a good time, tell jokes and laugh. If we had a date, we had a date. Chances are we didn't. We'd bring the girls down there if we did. And that would be our Monday night or Tuesday night or whatever night it was. But that's how we would live our days. And next day we'd get up, go to the gym, do the same thing again. Sometimes I'd meet Arnold for breakfast. Sometimes I'd meet him at the gym. But we trained together at that point. Um, when he was off doing some stuff, I trained with Bill Grant. Now, Bill trained with me four days a week. We cut our workouts down from six to four. And on four days, I got really good results. Um, it just seemed to get that, those rest periods in between really helped. Now, mind you, we were training a lot heavier back then. My benches were 350, 400 pounds all the time. And so I, I needed a lot of recovery time, but I was also 25 years old, so uh, I recovered a lot quicker than I do now at my age. But um, it, was a, it was good workouts. You know, there wasn't anything as far as supplements. They had a few real Blair's products, which were expensive. Uh, brewer's yeast, vitamin E capsules, that type of stuff. The juice wasn't prevalent like it is today. It was very minimal and hard to get, uh, even though it was legal. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the answer for everything. And a lot of you guys write in, how did you train so hard to make gains on low carbs and just high protein and no carbohydrates? I don't know. We just did. We trained hard. Our diet was consistent with protein five, six times a day. Carbs were minimal. We didn't eat a lot of carbs because then you get fat. And then you got to burn the fat off. And it's just a, a, a continuous cycle of trying to be in shape all the time. Bodybuilding was a lifestyle. That's how we lived. That was our life. That's what we did. We didn't do it on a spur of the moment for three months and take off and do nothing else. Like many of you guys write in, oh, I haven't trained in three months. I took off. Why? I never take off. I, I had 104 fever when I was training, which was stupid, but that's the lifestyle. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, pretty much it was the same workout again. Um, then the same sort of routine when we go on auditions, come back. I was wrestling at night, so I would leave to go to the wrestling show about 4 or 5. Uh, Showtime was 7.30 or 8. I was back home by 11. And so that was really a nice living for me because all the towns I wrestled in were no more than an hour, hour and a half away. So um, it allowed me to come home, get some rest, get up in the morning and train again. So I was wrestling at night and training in the morning. That's a lot of physical activity. So wrestling was pretty much my cardio. And I wasn't looking at it as a cardio, but I also looked at it like I might lose muscle in here because I'm working out doing something else rather than the weights, but it all worked out. Weekends, we usually had a party somewhere. 
it may be in the marina at some guy's house or it could be anywhere you know it just we just got together maybe the movies or, or a bunch of us single guys would go to the marina and you know it was a, it was a pickup place there's a lot of chicks there and we'd go meet them and we'd take them home and next week it'd be a new one <laughs> you know whatever worked out you know it's back in those days we didn't really care uh, I didn't really want a girlfriend. There were too many in L.A. and down the marina that were an abundance of beautiful young women. And so why limit yourself to one when you can have many, right? But then you got the drama. So you kind of like get a new one every week to have no drama. Arnold was the same way. We're all the same way. And we were always meeting people because back then you have to understand there weren't a lot of bodybuilders. There was a handful of us, maybe a dozen. And we were kind of freakish because everybody else was smaller and more big. However, we didn't wear tank tops and tight shirts like today. A lot of guys want to show it off. We wore button-down shirts, big shirts, sweatshirts, whatever. But you could tell in the clothes that we worked out. So that was kind of a plus. We didn't want to flaunt it in somebody's face. But when you got this girl home and you took your shirt off and she looked at it, she goes, Oh, my God, where did you get all that muscle? Well, you know, uh, I worked out for it. So it was kind of like a, a, a surprise uh, to people who didn't really know. And it was a great lifestyle. You know, I wish it was again today. We had a, a party uh, last week, and I haven't seen some of the guys in the gym for 40 years, and we all got together, and a lot of them look pretty darn good. Ken Sprague looked really good. Ferrigno always looks good. I see him all the time. And Ed Giuliani at 80 looks great. Uh, but these guys have continued the lifestyle to train. Many haven't. Some have died. And it, this is a lifestyle. And it's not about how many drugs you can take and all that. That's not the answer. That will kill you. So we've all leaned out. I've lost like 15, 20 pounds. Ferrigno's down. We're all down. There's no reason as we get older to be big and bulky. We have nothing to prove. You want to see pictures of me? I proved it. Case closed. I don't have to do it again. I wrestled. There's my videos. You've seen it. Now I'm just training for staying healthy, trying to stay good for my age, stay lean, and still have the same lifestyle. I'll go down to Venice once or twice a week, hang out with the guys, and train. So that's pretty much the lifestyle then. That's my lifestyle now. Some guy at lunch today who I don't know very well said, oh, do you still go to the gym? And I said, yeah, six days a week. I mean, that's just my life. It's not a sporadic thing. And for you guys, this should be a lifestyle as well. Don't count on outside supplements to get huge because it won't stay with you. You'll lose it. Train hard, eat right. That is the key. And you guys argue with me. No, you must have had more carbs. You must have done this. I'm telling you the truth. That's just how it was. We didn't have that many carbs. I'd go to eat at my mom's house, and she'd try to fill me full of some sort of pastas and sugars. And I said, Mom, I can't eat this. Oh, a little bit won't hurt you. Well, in my mind it would, and so I didn't do it. Sundays were our junk day. That was pasta, spaghetti, meatballs, cheesecake, jello molds, you name it, we ate it. Pizza, ice cream, cookies. And you'd eat to your heart's content until you couldn't eat anymore, and then you got full and you felt like shit. So that, by the end of the day, you felt so bloated, you thought, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. So you're good for the whole week because you've done it, it's over with and you don't have to do it again. Monday, you're back in the gym. You lose the water. You retain from the carbs. Tuesday, you're back in shape again. Because you can't get fat on one day. So a lot of you guys that say, well, I'm still eating McDonald's, and I have guys write to me and want to become wrestlers. You know, I haven't been to a gym. I'm still doing the McDonald's thing. Well, stop it. You want to get in shape? Eat for a guy who wants to get in shape. Think like a bodybuilder. Think like a bodybuilder trains and how he eats. When it comes to work and a job, don't think like a bodybuilder, because most of the guys didn't have jobs, and they didn't have any money to this day. And then you ask about, what about the small waist and wide shoulders back then? Why was that? Well, a lot of you young guys don't seem to understand that back in the 40s and 50s, the, the epitome of a bodybuilder was a wide shoulder, small waist, the V-shape. Shirts were cut V-shaped. It was all saying, oh, that guy's got a V-taper. That was a pretty looking, good looking body because the smaller waist accentuates the shoulder width. You, that's what the point you want to make, wide shoulder, small waist. Well, because there weren't the drugs back then that there are today, and today's bodybuilders are bloated. Their stomachs are extended, their bodies are thick and wide, and they don't have that. It's just a blocky look, which I don't prefer, and many of you have written to me and told me you don't prefer as well. So that's the diet, that's the training is different, the drugs are different, everything has changed. Doesn't mean it's good. A lot of guys prefer the old school stuff.